Our DNA contains the answers to many questions. It can tell us why our eyes are a certain color, or even why some foods don't taste very good to us. Changes in our DNA can also tell us why certain people develop certain diseases. But how exactly does this work? My name is Emma, and my classmate Elise and I have put together this video to help you answer this question. We are both Master of Health Science students in the Medical Genomics program at the University of Toronto. In this video, we will provide you with a beginner's guide to a genetic disease called Duchenne muscular dystrophy and use it as an example to help you understand one way in which changes to the DNA can cause disease. Here's a roadmap of where our guidebook will take us. We will start with an introduction to the symptoms and features of Duchenne muscular dystrophy. We will then take a close look at how changes to the DNA can lead to this disease. Last but not least, we will talk about genetic treatment options. You can use the progress bar at the bottom of your screen to track how far along you are in our learning journey. Throughout the video, keep an eye out for questions to test your muscle memory along the way. If you'd like to follow along with a pen and paper, feel free to follow the link in the description box below and print out the Test Your Muscle Memory worksheet. Let's get started. Duchenne muscular dystrophy, also called Duchenne for short, is a rare genetic disease. But what exactly do we mean by that? By rare, we mean that if we were to take all of the people in a certain population, a relatively small number would have this disease. By genetic, we mean that it is caused by changes to the DNA. We'll review exactly what this means later on, but let's first explore some of the symptoms of Duchenne. Duchenne primarily affects individuals who are assigned male at birth and it is a disease that causes muscle damage and weakness to develop over time. The earliest symptoms of Duchenne typically include challenges with movement, like having a hard time climbing the stairs or experiencing frequent falls. This typically first occurs at between two and three years old. By the time children with Duchenne reach between 10 and 12 years old, their muscles become very weak and they often require a wheelchair for getting around. Individuals with Duchenne typically live to the age of between 20 and 40 years old, at which point they experience failure of the heart or the lungs. Before we dive into how genetic changes lead to these symptoms, why does Duchenne primarily affect males? To answer this question, we need to go all the way back to the basic concept of inheritance. Our bodies are made up of trillions of cells, each containing deoxyribonucleic acid, or DNA organized into 23 pairs of chromosomes. 22 of these chromosomes are considered autosomal, while the final pair are the sex chromosomes. The sex chromosomes determine whether an individual is assigned male or female at birth. While female individuals have two X chromosomes, male individuals have one X and one Y chromosome. We have two copies of each chromosome because one is inherited from our mother and the other from our father. If we zoom in to one of our pairs of autosomal chromosomes, we can see that each one is made up of genes, shown here in different colors. We can inherit different versions of a gene from each of our parents. The different versions of genes are what make us unique, but certain changes in certain genes can also lead to disease. Take for example this pink gene. You can see that one copy is dark pink. This is the healthy version of the gene. The light pink version has a change in it. Sometimes, changes in one copy of a gene are enough to cause disease, while other times, both copies need to be affected. But how do we know how many copies are needed to cause disease? The answer to this question is that we need to know the inheritance pattern. Duchenne is inherited in what is called an X-linked recessive manner. You might be wondering what exactly that means, so let's break it down together. By recessive, we mean that both copies of the gene need to be changed for the individual to have the disease. So if we look at our pink gene again, someone who has only one copy with the change, shown in light pink, will not have the disease. If an individual has two light pink or affected copies, they will have the disease. Now what about the X-linked part of the equation? Remember that our 23rd pair of chromosomes are the sex chromosomes. Females have two X chromosomes, one from the mother and one from the father. Males, on the other hand, have one X chromosome from the mother and a Y chromosome from the father. 
A disease that is X-linked means that it is caused by changes to a gene that exists on the X chromosome, just like the pink one we've shown here. Let's pause for a moment to test our muscle memory. Given what we've learned about X-linked and recessive inheritance, try to put these concepts together to explain why Duchenne is more common in males. Pause the video here and we'll work through the answer together when you come back. To answer this question, we need to remember that female individuals have two X chromosomes, while males have only one. We know that Duchenne has an X-linked recessive pattern of inheritance, meaning that it is caused by changes to a gene on the X chromosome. Since females have two X chromosomes, they would need both copies of this gene to have a change in order to have Duchenne. Since males only have one X chromosome, they would only need one copy with the change to have the disease. You can think of this process almost like playing darts. It's much more likely and much more difficult to hit two bullseyes than only one. Since males only need one bullseye, they have a higher chance of having the disease. Now that we understand how Duchenne is inherited and why it is so much more common in males, you might be wondering what gene is involved and how changes to that gene lead to muscle weakness. To understand how this works, let's review what is known as the central dogma of biology. Remember that each of our cells contains 23 pairs of chromosomes. Again, if we zoom into one chromosome, we can see that it is made up of several genes. Each gene contains the set of instructions needed to make a protein that will go on to perform a specific function in the cell. In order to get from DNA to protein, we need to go through a two-step process. Let's zoom in to our pink gene again to see how this works. We start with DNA. Then in step one, called transcription, DNA is transcribed into RNA. Unlike DNA, which is made up of two strands, RNA has only one strand. This single strand can then go through a process called translation to produce the protein that is encoded by the gene. To understand how changes to the DNA lead to Duchenne, we need to take a little bit of a closer look at transcription, the process of getting from DNA to RNA. If we zoom into a gene, we see that the DNA is made up of two different types of segments called exons and introns. The DNA is initially transcribed into what we call pre-RNA, which contains all of these segments. While we do need the information contained in exons to make a fully functioning protein, we actually don't need the introns. To get rid of these segments, the pre-RNA goes through what is called splicing. You can think of this process as using a set of molecular scissors to cut out the introns from the RNA. Once the introns are removed, the exons are stitched back together in order to produce what we call the mature RNA. This is the RNA transcript that will go on to be translated into a protein. That was a lot of information. To test your muscle memory of the process of moving from DNA to protein, pause the video here and try to fill in the blanks. Let's fill in the blanks together. Remember that we start with DNA, which is made up of exons and introns. DNA undergoes transcription to produce pre-RNA. The introns are then removed from the pre-RNA during splicing in order to produce the mature RNA, which can then be translated into a protein. Now let's apply what we've learned about moving from DNA to protein to understanding the genetic basis of Duchenne. Duchenne is caused by changes to a gene on the X chromosome called DMD. Of all the genes that exist in our 23 chromosomes, DMD happens to be one of the longest. In fact, it contains 79 exons. Following transcription into RNA, the RNA transcript is translated into a protein. This protein is called dystrophin. Let's take a closer look at dystrophin's role in the cell. Dystrophin is highly expressed in muscle cells, meaning that healthy muscles contain lots of dystrophin. It is responsible for connecting proteins outside of the cell to internal components of the muscle cell. You can think of it as an anchor holding external and internal structures together. In this way, dystrophin is very important in maintaining the structure of the muscle providing strength and protection from injury, making sure the muscle is healthy and functions properly. Let's take a moment to test our muscle memory. We know that dystrophin is important for healthy muscles, 
and that changes to the DMD gene can lead to Duchenne. Pause the video here to think about whether having more or less dystrophin in the cell would lead to muscle weakness. Remember that dystrophin is acting like an anchor between structures inside and outside the cell to help give the muscle the strength it needs to work properly. If we lose dystrophin, we lose these strong connections and the muscle becomes weak. So we would expect that a decrease or loss of dystrophin would lead to Duchenne. Now let's explore the types of DNA changes that can lead to a loss of dystrophin. The first type of change to DMD that can cause dystrophin to be lost is called a point change, where a very small section of the gene is altered. Point changes occur in around 20% of individuals with Duchenne. The second type of change happens when a section of the DNA is repeated. This is called a duplication, which makes the gene longer than usual by adding one or more copies of a certain section. Duplications account for a relatively small portion of individuals with Duchenne. The final type of change occurs when a portion of the DMD gene is lost. This is called a deletion and is the most common type of DNA change seen in individuals with Duchenne. Many different types of deletions can occur in individuals with Duchenne. Let's zoom in and look at one example. A deletion of exons 49 and 50. How would deleting these two exons prevent dystrophin from being made? To answer this question, let's think of our DNA like a book, where each gene is a chapter. If we zoom into part of the chapter, just like we zoomed into part of our gene, we find the sentence, Sally was visiting her family in Italy. If the words visiting her are deleted, our sentence then reads, Sally was family in Italy. It doesn't make sense anymore. Just like removing two words in this sentence cause it to lose its meaning, deleting two exons in the DMD gene can prevent dystrophin from being produced. Let's take a closer look at how this works. We can think about different exons in the DMD gene as different parts of our sentence. Sally was visiting her family in Italy. When exons 49 and 50 are deleted and the DNA is transcribed into RNA, our sentence doesn't make sense anymore. Sally was family in Italy. A proofreading process in the muscle cell detects this mistake and a warning signal causes it to be degraded. As a result, no dystrophin is produced, leading to the muscle weakness we see in individuals with Duchenne. Now you might be wondering to yourself, is there anything we can do to correct this mistake in the sentence and prevent dystrophin from being lost? When it comes to individuals with Duchenne, treatment has historically focused on managing symptoms with medication, surgery, and rehabilitation. While they can help to manage the symptoms and improve quality of life, these approaches do not directly address some of the underlying DNA changes causing Duchenne. This is where genetic approaches come into the picture. Enter exon-skipping antisense oligonucleotides, or ASOs for short. While they do not cure Duchenne, they can treat some of the underlying genetic causes. To understand how these treatments work, we will take a closer look at one example called a Teplersin, which can address the deletion of exons 49 and 50 in the DND gene that we walked through earlier. To understand how a Teplersin works, let's go back to thinking about DMD like a chapter in a book. Remember that deleting part of the sentence caused it to lose its meaning. Sally was family in Italy. We can't put the words visiting her back once they've been removed, but we can remove other words to make a sentence that, while slightly different, still makes sense and retains most of the meaning from the original version. If we remove the word family, our sentence changes, but it makes sense again. Sally was in Italy. If we go back to our DMD gene, removing exons 49 and 50 made our sentence lose its meaning. Sally was family in Italy. Now if we could find a way to also remove exon 51, our sentence would make sense again. Sally was in Italy. But how do we remove exon 51? The answer is, we need to find a way to skip it. This is where a Teplersin, an exon-skipping ASO, comes in. This single-stranded molecule is injected into the muscle. 
Once the DMD gene is transcribed into pre-RNA, a teplersin perfectly matches up with exon 51. While the RNA would usually be spliced on either side of exon 51, a teplersin blocks the splice sites from the molecular scissors. Now let's take this opportunity to test our muscle memory about the splicing process. If the splice sites around exon 51 are blocked, what do you think the mature RNA will look like? Pause the video here to think about this question. Remember that splicing cuts the introns out of the pre-RNA. So if the splice sites on either side of exon 51 are blocked, the cell won't know where the introns end and the exon begins. This means that all of exon 51 will be removed along with the introns on either side. While the mature RNA is shorter, the sentence makes sense again. Sally was in Italy, so the transcript can be translated into a shortened form of dystrophin. Let's take a step back to review. Healthy individuals have exons 49 and 50 in the DMD gene. The RNA transcript therefore encodes a full sentence. Sally was visiting her family in Italy. As a result, the healthy full-length version of dystrophin is produced. In some individuals with Duchenne, exons 49 and 50 are deleted. The RNA transcript encodes a sentence that no longer makes sense. Sally was family in Italy. As a result, no dystrophin is produced. When these individuals with Duchenne are given a teplersin, an additional word is removed from the sentence, and it makes sense again. Sally was in Italy. While the dystrophin produced is shorter than in healthy individuals, it's better than having no dystrophin at all. A teplersin is just one example of an exon-skipping ASO that has been approved by the Food and Drug Administration in the United States to treat individuals with Duchenne. A teplersin works by skipping over exon 51. We saw how this works for individuals with the deletion of exons 49 and 50, but it can also be used for other DNA changes around exon 51. In addition to a teplersin, galoderson and viltilarsin have also been approved. These treatments skip exon 53 and are therefore used for treating individuals with different changes in the DMD gene compared to a teplersin. Finally, casimersin works by skipping over exon 45. While designed to skip different exons and therefore useful in individuals with different types of changes in DMD, these exon skipping treatments all work by producing a shortened form of dystrophin. Keep in mind that these genetic approaches cannot be used for all individuals with Duchenne, but only those with DNA changes that can be addressed by skipping either exon 51, 53, or 45. It's also important to remember that they are a treatment and not a cure. Exon skipping ASOs may slow the progression of Duchenne, but cannot fully restore muscle function. With more research, we hope that even better genetic treatments will continue to be made to help individuals with Duchenne live longer and healthier lives. We've now reached the end of our journey, so let's summarize what we've learned. We discussed the features and symptoms of Duchenne, talked about the genetic causes and how exon skipping treatments can slow disease progression. We learned about Duchenne muscular dystrophy as an example to answer the question, how can changes to the DNA cause disease? We learned that by developing genetic treatments, scientists are finding new ways to treat these diseases. And we think that's pretty cool. We wouldn't have been able to make this video without research published by scientists doing incredible work to further our understanding of Duchenne muscular dystrophy. We've acknowledged and cited some of these papers for you here. Thanks for watching and hope to see you next time.